The ancient flight computer in the Boeing 737 MAX actually belongs in a museum, not in the $120 million airplane in the year 2020. So you would assume that Boeing's proposed fix for the MAX would be to replace the Relic computers from the 1990s with brand new modern computers, right? Wrong. Their genius fix is simply to write more code. Code is what killed 346 people in the first place, and I'm really worried that Boeing may be making the same mistake again. Next on Maximus. I saw this material in a great story from Alex Castro with the online paper, The Verge. Every 737 MAX has two flight control computers. These take some of the workload from the pilots, whether that's through full automation such as autopilot or through flight control adjustments during manual flight. These computers can literally fly the airplane. They have authority over major control surfaces and throttles, which means that any malfunction could turn catastrophic in a hurry, as we all now know. So it's more important for manufacturers to choose hardware that's proven to be safe rather than to run a fleet of airplanes on some cutting-edge technology with bugs that have yet to be worked out. So in the creation of the MAX, Boeing decided if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And they stuck it out with the Collins Aerospace FCC 730 series, first built in 1996. Each computer features a pair of single-core 16-bit processors that run independently of each other, which reduces computing power but also keeps a faulty processor from taking down the entire system. Even by late 90s computer tech standards, the FCC 730s were behind the curve. By the time they went to market, Nintendo had already replaced its 16-bit SNES console with the Nintendo 64, the first game console to use, you guessed it, a 64-bit CPU. And also by that time, IBM had created the world's first dual-core processor. Of course, old and slow isn't always worse. The 737 Next Generation series is the safest narrow-body airplane ever made, in part due to these reliable, if unspectacular, computers. To keep costs down and also to hurry the new plane out the door, Boeing wanted to reuse them in the new 737 MAX as well. The MAX might still be flying today if those computers simply had to perform the same task that they had for almost 30 years. But Boeing needed them to do much more. The important thing to know about the 737 MAX is that it was a rush job, as we told you here on Maximus in the video they knew. I'll post a link down below. In 2010, Boeing's only rival, Airbus, unveiled the A320neo a direct competitor to the 737 next generation that could fly farther on less fuel with lower emissions than any other narrow-body airplane. Boeing was caught by surprise. While Airbus had developed a new one secret, Boeing's engineers spent five years debating whether to design a new 737 replacement or simply update the airframe without resolution. However, the NEO changed that in a matter of months. Now there was no time for a new plane. So Boeing just went with the same old, same old. But in order to offer its own new product when the new Airbus came out, Boeing would have to rush the airplane out the door in just five years. That's less time than it took to develop either the 777 or the 787. The main selling point of the new 737 was clear. New engines that would increase the airplane's fuel efficiency and range. But to hit that ambitious launch date, Boeing would have to take shortcuts on just about everything else. The new engines, which were larger and heavier than the ones on the next generation, did indeed make the MAX just as fuel efficient as its rival, but they also disrupted the flow of air around the wings and control surfaces of the airplane in a very specific way. During high angle climbs, this disruption would cause the control columns in the airplane to suddenly go slack which might cause pilots to lose control of the aircraft during a dangerous maneuver. Boeing could have fixed this aerodynamic anomaly with a hardware change, adaptive surfaces on the engine housing, resculpted wings, or even just adding a stick pusher to the controls that would push on the control column mechanically at just the right time. But hardware changes added time, costs, and most importantly, regulatory scrutiny to the development process. Boeing's management was clear, avoid changes, avoid regulators, stay on schedule, period. So the development team attacked the hardware problem with software. In addition to the standard software suite on the 737 MAX's two computers, Boeing loaded another routine called the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, or MCAS. It would run in the background waiting for the airplane to enter a high angle climb 
Then it would act, rotating the airplane's horizontal stabilizer to counteracting the changing aerodynamic forces. I think that many people unfamiliar with the MAX would assume that what Boeing called the MCAS system was just that, a system, a piece of hardware. It's not. It's just software. It's a line of code. Just another workaround so they didn't have to add one new item to this plane that would draw attention of the FAA and other regulators around the world. On paper, it seemed elegant enough. It had a side benefit, too. The Federal Aviation Administration doesn't scrutinize software as hard as it does any physical change to the airframe. So MCAS, as we all know, was approved with minimal review, outdated computers, and all. But Boeing's software shortcut had a serious problem. Under certain circumstances, it activated erroneously, sending the airplane into an infinite loop of nosedives. Unless the pilot can, in under four seconds, correctly diagnose the error, throw a specific emergency switch, and start recovery maneuvers, they will lose control of the airplane and crash, which is exactly what happened in the case of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302. However, for those of you who saw my video on Boeing's chief technical pilot, Mark Forkner, you know that Boeing made it impossible for any pilot to know how to override the MCAS system because Boeing removed all mention of the MCAS system from any and all flight manuals. They even got the FAA to approve the move. I'll post a link to that video down below also. So in June 2019, Boeing submitted a software fix to the FAA for approval. But subsequent stress testing of the Max's computers revealed more flaws than just bad code. They are vulnerable to single-bit errors that could disable entire control systems or throw the airplane into an uncommanded dive. They fail to boot up properly. They may even freeze in autopilot mode even when the airplane is in a stall, which could hamper recovery efforts in the middle of an in-flight emergency. Despite all of this, and this is what pisses me off so much about Boeing, despite all of this, Boeing insists that it can fix everything with software. Boeing has elected not to go with a new, more powerful computer or to add more of them to the two already there in order to better distribute the workload. For comparison, now listen to this. For comparison, the Airbus A320neo has computers of similar vintage, but it has seven of them. Did you catch that? Airbus has seven computers to Boeing's two on the max. Still, Boeing insists there will not be a hardware change. Boeing says they are dedicating all resources necessary to ensure that the improvements to the 737 MAX are comprehensive and thoroughly tested, a spokesman said. We do not anticipate changes to the hardware. Again, like I said, they will not replace the hardware. I'm not an engineer, and even I know this whole process isn't going to end well. So what's the FAA doing about it? So far, the FAA agrees. It completed its review of the software earlier this year, and it seems to be on board with the proposed software fixes. But returning the MAX to service isn't as simple as getting the agency's approval on software. Because Boeing essentially, no, not essentially, they did bully the FAA into certifying the MAX in the first place. The agency is eager to prove that it knows what it's doing now. Its inspectors are scrutinizing the airplane with less pressure to rush and they have found several new issues with the airplane, faulty wiring, debris in fuel tanks, and wing components that don't meet FAA standards. All videos you've seen here on Maximus, uh, I'll post links to those down also. Even so, the FAA's reputation is already ruined. For decades, aviation regulators have relied on reciprocal agreements to speed up the process of certifying airplanes in other countries. If an airplane is approved by one regulator, it's almost always approved by all of them. Now, however, Europe, China and India each want to certify the airplane independently, which will add months to the timeline. Once MAX gets their regulatory green light, it will still be several months before it can carry passengers again. In January, Boeing announced that in order to get certified to fly the MAX, pilots will have to go through full motion simulator training once the simulators are updated with the final approved software package. This, as many of you already know, is a full retreat from one of the airplane's original selling points that pilots only needed a one-hour iPad session to fly the new 737 model. The problem is that there just aren't that many simulators to go around. There are only 34 in the entire world, with only two companies approved to make more. To put this in perspective, okay, let's use Dallas-Fort Worth. It's home to two airlines, Southwest and American. Between them, they have 1,300 737 pilots 
and only one 737 MAX simulator. Assuming four hours of simulator time per pilot and running the simulators 24-7, it would take both airlines about six years to get everyone approved to fly the MAX. And there are 50 other airlines with MAXs in their fleets and pilots to train. Six years just to get pilots up to speed. Now, we all know it's not going to take six years in reality. So what does that mean? Even more shortcuts. So the very shortcuts that Boeing used to rush to max into production are now keeping it on the ground. It was once the fastest selling airplane in history. Now nobody wants to touch Boeing airplanes. In January and February, the company took on 18 new orders, an 80% decrease compared to 2019. Its competitor Airbus recorded 296 orders. Despite the MAX's declining popularity, Boeing remains optimistic about the MAX's future prospects. Our estimate to return the 737 MAX fleet to service remains the middle of 2020, said Boeing's spokesperson. Nothing, it seems, will prompt the FAA to send this particular design back to the drawing board. Instead, Boeing will once again attempt to compensate for a hardware flaw on the 737 MAX with slightly rewritten software. It's the same design philosophy that created this catastrophe for Boeing in the first place. And it's the same philosophy that has failed so far to produce a safe and reliable airplane. Man, you guys know me. I tell you all the time. I'm a Boeing fan. I was a Boeing fan. I love Boeing. Man, this just kills me. What they're doing, still doubling down on software and code on a 16-bit single-core computer, practically from the 80s, is just mind-boggling. I'm anxious to hear what you think. Let me know down in the comment section below. Well, that's it for me. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring that bell. And until next time, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground. And I will see you in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus.